Hey everyone, as we, oh, thank you. As we cut the cake, I'm Olivia with Coach Hank. I'll be the DC based organizer here. Really great to see some. Um, yes, I'll be focusing on the Cut the Pentagon based here in DC. Um, but the Cut the Pentagon, we really want to focus too on what we want to fund instead. So the people, the planet, uh, peace, and the future. Um, before we go ahead and get started, I do want to acknowledge the land that we're on. Um, this is Sulin Occupied, Piscataway, Anacostian, and the Chunk land. Um, and also the building behind us was built um, by slaves. So the things that we're up against, white supremacy, colonialism, imperialism, patriarchy, um, are all fueled by militarism. And instead, we are... Um, and, and while they're all fueled by militarism, our black, brown, indigenous, LGBTQ plus, plus disabled, um, undocumented, and stateless friends will suffer the brunt even more, both here and abroad. Militarization, um, militarism, we want to cut this budget and in doing so build a coalition with many of the organizations that are represented here, um, here, which you can also see them over there. Um, and some of those people are going to be represented here today. Our coalition is building. Um, we want to be an umbrella, a tent, um, more so than mili uh, militarism is, is a tent. Um, we, the, our communities are, oh, thank you so much. Um, a lot of this work happens at the grassroots level, so that's why we're especially excited to be Sorry. working in partnership and amplifying the groups here in D.C. Um, to support your actions creatively through direct actions, teach-ins, also through the mutual aid initiative that a lot of you are um, doing already. Um, so we're not here to recreate the wheel, but instead amplify and build power together um, and do so. So you're gonna hear a little bit today, um, and I'm gonna introduce the first speaker. Oh, actually, before I do that, I am gonna uh, introduce my co-conspirator, co-MC, Sean of the Answer Coalition. Yeah. All right, how y'all feeling? Yeah. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up, won't take it no more. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up, won't take no more. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up, can't take it no more. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up, can't take it no more. We're which means act now to stop war and racism. And it's so important that we're here today, in this time, with this message, to cut the Pentagon. An obscene, a disgusting, a grossly bloated budget that goes to cause death, destruction, bloodshed, suffering, and hunger all over this earth. Meanwhile, you and I go without right here in the United States. Now, just two days from today, on September 14th, we'll make 20 years of the Answer Coalition. Woo! That's right, yeah, give it up. That's a long time to be in struggle. And for those of y'all who are in it with us, you know it ain't always been no easy task. And it's not a coincidence that the Answer Coalition came together on September 14th. That was three days after the attacks on September 11th, 2001. And this was a movement that was comprised of aspects of the anti-globalization movement. Some of y'all remember the anti-globalization movement. And so after that devastating attack on September 11th, where nearly 3,000 people died in the aftermath, then President
President George W. Bush. That's right. <laughs> George W. Bush opportunistically used the grief, the rage, the anger, the frustration that people in this country felt seeing that attack and used it to manufacture consent for what became a campaign of never-ending war all across the globe. And that, that opportunism of George Bush playing upon people's vulnerability in that time made it difficult even in the movement. There were even some aspects of the peace movement that was critical of answer for organizing that soon after the attacks. And yet, 25,000 people came to Washington, D.C. to be a part of those anti-war and anti-imperialist demonstrations. And what that shows is that the American people who were still in shock from the death of this inhumanity still had the clarity to say we are sick of wars being carried out in our name but without our consent. This is what has guided the steps of the anti-coalition and the anti-war movement in the time since We've been running for a mighty long time, and we're not tired yet. And so why is it that we need to cut the Pentagon? Why is it that we need to take a slice out of the war machine? Well, let's talk about Washington, D.C. Did you all know that in this city, there are at least 10,000 empty housing units? Meanwhile, under this pandemic, you all have been around D.C. You see the homeless encampments growing and you see new ones popping up where there weren't any before. There shouldn't even be a homelessness issue in the city of Washington. There shouldn't be a homelessness issue in the United States because there's more empty housing in this country than there are homeless people. And so... Why aren't these folks housed? Why doesn't every human being have unrestricted access to food, clothes, shelter, health care, quality education, gainful employment, and all those other things? Because you can't make a buck if everybody has all the things they need. You can't turn a profit if everybody got a place to live and some food to eat and some health care. Even under this pandemic, you and I didn't get the support we needed. Yeah, they gave us a couple of trifling little so-called stimulus checks. They didn't stimulate nothing. All it did was keep disaster at bay for just a little while longer. And now what has happened? The Supreme Court, an unelected body of the rich, has said that they are A-OK -okay with putting 11 million people out on the streets during a global pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and did you all read their decision? What they said was very revealing. They said, well, we can't just let people stay housed during the pandemic. We can't just cancel the rent. Because if we cancel the rent, then people may expect the government to feed everybody. If we, if we house everybody, folks might expect the government to take care of people when they sit. Imagine that. God forbid that the government that holds itself up as the paragon of democracy and human rights and all these other high-sounding things, God forbid that country actually take care of its people. Matter of fact, they said that that, that extension of that eviction ban was a breathtaking overreach of power. Imagine that. Keeping 11 million people, mostly children, housed during the pandemic. The idea of that literally took their breath away. This is what they're saying. This is the depth of inhumanity of the folks that call themselves our leadership. 
And it's no surprise that these folks aren't down with canceling the rent and keeping people housed because they're down with these corporate developers. And so for them to advocate for the cancellation of the rent and housing homeless people, that means they can't line their pockets. So we should be clear that those folks, the interests of the folks in the Pentagon, the interests of the folks in Congress and in the White House, their interests run contrary to ours. And so what does that mean? That means we have no help coming from them. It means you and I have to organize. Yeah. 46.5 billion dollars set aside for emergency rental assistance under this pandemic. 89% of it has not gone out. How disgusting is this? And so we see very clearly we're in a situation where profits are being put under the, uh, being put over people. Wall Street been doing good under this pandemic. The billionaires got richer. We got a whole new uh, class of wealthy people now, pandemic profiteering. And speaking of pandemic, when we talk about the Pentagon, when we talk about war, we're not just talking about guns and bombs. We're not just talking about boots on the ground. We're not just talking about sanctions, but we should also talk about the hoarding of vaccines. That's happening not only in the United States, but North America. Canada has enough vaccines right now to vaccinate its population five times over. Meanwhile, the developing world in Latin America, on the African continent, in Asia, are struggling in many places to even have one vaccine. And I mentioned sanctions. You want to talk about the military machine? This brutal war machine that is already causing incredible suffering in these countries that the U.S. government deems as its enemy. It was already causing suffering with its sanctions in Iran, in Cuba, in Venezuela, all over this earth. And not even a global pandemic was enough to prick the conscience of this government to alleviate those sanctions despite calls for just that from the international community. And you want to know why their conscience wasn't pricked? Because they ain't got no conscience. You and I have to be the conscience for this country. And that is why we're here today. That is why we're saying, cut the Pentagon. And that's why we're here. We're gonna have our program today. We're gonna have some speakers. We're gonna continue to fight. We're gonna stand together. We're gonna have some cake and ice cream because the struggle is sweet. And this is how we keep our spirits up as this government and this system tries so much to crush our humanity. So y'all ready to keep up the fight? Yeah. We're fired up, won't take it no more. 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 Right. Thank you so much. Um, and I think as we continue to cut into the cake, uh, if you didn't get some, there, there's plenty here. Uh, we have cake for, there's plenty of cake to go around when it's in the shape of a Pentagon. Um, the next person we have uh, speaking with us represents um, that, that restored energy, the young people. Um, Reb is a 15 year old climate activist. I am proud to call them my friend. Uh, we were up on the front lines together at line three fighting the pipeline, um, the over-militarized state of the indigenous uh, people in northern Minnesota, or so-called Minnesota. Reb is also an organizer with Extinction Rebellion, one of our partners who uh, knows how to do some creative direct actions as well, um, and has written several of her middle and junior high papers around what we could do instead with the militarism budget. So she's, they are beyond their years. Here you go, Reb. <laughs> Uh, I'm Rev. I'm 15 years old. 15 years old. 
and I'm happy to have my first meet with you all. Um, so, um, yeah, so I've been um, really concerned about how much money is being spent on the military for a while. Um, Congresswoman Barbara Lee asked, why are Americans paying $32 million every hour for wars since 9-11? The astronomical amount of money being spent on the U.S. military makes no sense for so many reasons. The U.S. military is one of the biggest contributors to the climate crisis in the world. Not only are its drones and jets and nuclear weapons directly destroying the lives of people in other countries, they're also using an enormous amount of fossil fuels and producing a massive amount of carbon emissions. Um, the climate crisis is happening now and already hurting so many people. And it's going to get a lot worse if institutions like the military keep up their polluting. But it doesn't have to continue like this. The U.S. should be spending the money being spent on the military instead on renewable energy, housing, healthy food, and making those things affordable and available for everyone. Right on. With, with all the money being spent on the military, we could be building enough renewable energy infrastructure for everyone in the U.S. to be using renewable energy affordably. Some people say that the military provides a lot of jobs and boosts the economy. But instead, by putting the money for the military in the Green New Deal, we could provide more jobs that are healthier and better paying. Yes. Yes. We have to rise up and fight this problem. Because every year, we're wasting billions of dollars on the military, while people in our country and around the world are hungry, homeless, and suffering from the climate crisis. We can help millions of people have a better life with stable housing and enough food to eat. We can be using energy from the sun instead of the energy that's destroying the earth. We don't need to be spending so much money on the military. We should be spending money for the betterment of all people. Thank you. Thank you. All right, give them another round of applause. Woo! Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education, not for war and occupation. That's right. We're here today, Code Pink, the Answer Coalition, and our co-sponsors, standing today after the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attack, saying we need to cut the Pentagon, yeah. refund the people. Yeah, we just uncovered people. There we go. For the people. <laughs> and uh, we know that this never-ending war machine is a global project. So we don't even have to leave this hemisphere to see the ravages of the U.S. war machine. We see how the U.S. is attacking countries like Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba, Bolivia, and then they get on television and tell us that these are our enemies. But let me ask you a question. Is Daniel Ortega the reason we don't have universal health care in this country? No. Is Nicolas Maduro the reason why the police kill black people in the streets of this country? No. No. This government, as Martin Luther King called it in his time, is the main purveyor of violence on the world today. And speaking on Dr. King, when we talk about a peace movement, you know what Dr. King said about peace? He said, there's a false peace that's the absence of tension, but a true peace 
That's the presence of justice. And so this is what we're struggling for here today. And so I hope you'll join me in welcoming our next speaker to talk some more about the impacts of the U.S. war machine in this hemisphere. Join me in welcoming Patricio Zamorano of the Council on Hemispheric Affairs. Give him a hand as he comes. And this lovely Salvador Allende shirt. That's another 9-11. Oh yeah. <laughs> you might want to talk a little more, Sean. Oh, all right. Money for jobs in education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs in education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs in education. Not for war and occupation. That's right. Absolutely. Well, while we're waiting on Patricio to set up, we're going to bring up another speaker, one of our dynamic young organizers here in Washington, D.C., someone who has been holding it down ever since last summer during the rebellion against racism following the racist police killing of George Floyd. And that has continued here in D.C. with the police killing of Antoine Gilmore, George Watson, and so many others. I want you all to join me in welcoming a Finney from Freedom Fighters, D.C. Give a Finney a hand as they come. Hello, y'all. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Afini. Uh, I'm really excited to be out here and share space with all of you. I am an anti-war veteran. I'm a core organizer uh, with Freedom Fighters, D.C., a grassroots abolitionist org out here doing mutual aid and direct aid in the community. Um, I'm also a contributor on Fred Hampton Leftist, so please check us out. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't get to write my little notes down, so excuse me. Take your time. <laughs> uh, you know, where do we start? Like, we are literally standing in the middle of a pandemic and we're still arguing about what we should and should not be investing in. We're still asking, demanding health care when that should not be something that we have to organize around. But yet here we are. They don't have to organize when they want to bomb Iran and when they want to bomb Somalia. They don't, they don't have to do a mass action. They just decide to do that with our tax dollars. <laughs> like, that's our money that goes into destroying other countries, that goes into disrupting governments that honestly just treat their fucking citizens better than we treat ours. Like, that's what our money is being invested in right now. A global violence. So if you are somebody that is out here trying to figure out what you can do to organize, the best thing you can do is invest in mutual aid and invest in your communities. Building trust within your community. Building that, that relationship with the people that are right next to you. Because I can promise you, the motherfuckers that are in this fucking White House, all those fucking pigs that are on the street, and the fucking Pentagon and the Department of So-Called Defense, when the only thing they fucking defend is the rich and powerful, those motherfuckers are not going to fight for you. So we have to fight for ourselves. They spent $300 million per day for 20 years in Afghanistan. And that is not including all the money that we give to Israel every single year. That was not including all the money that we spent in covert operations and other places through the CIA. That's not including all the fucking money that we spend on our 800 military bases all across the world. That's not including none of that shit. $300 million per day to murder innocent children, to murder women, and then turn around and say that we should go back for women's rights? Are y'all fucking serious? <laughs> if we gave a fuck about humans, women's rights, if we gave a fuck about human rights, we would have left them alone in the 80s when the, before we started training up the Mujahideen. <laughs> we would have left them alone then. But here we are, yet again, America, making a mess and then trying to some, for some reason be the solution to that mess only to profit and to benefit for these motherfucking corporations and for these military contractors that don't give a shit about us enough to not fucking pollute the earth. I don't know, or to not fucking...
fucking, I don't know, train our police officers to act the same fucking way in our streets. The same exact way are we are policing the world or the same exact way the police officers are policing us here. We have to stop the global violence. We have to divest from global violence. We will no longer participate in shit that, that does not benefit us. They have been benefiting themselves for so long now. So it is time that we start to organize, that we stand up for each other and say, fuck no, that we are not going to do this shit anymore. If they can spend $300 million per day in Afghanistan, they can invest $20 billion to house everybody. Just a one-time investment. They can invest in a universal anti-racist healthcare system so black women like myself don't die on delivery tables. They can invest in that. They have the money for that. So because we know they have the money for that, we're going to demand that they fucking give us our money back and invest it back into our communities. I just want to finish up with this. Thank you all so much for being out here, but this shit does not stop here. Shit's gonna get a lot fucking uglier before it gets cute. <laughs> so be prepared, be ready, and understand that the way that we are ready for that shit, the way that we get ready for the, for the revolution is by investing in mutual aid, by building those infrastructures outside of the government, by holding these motherfuckers accountable, and not in two years, not in four years, but if you don't vote the way we want you to vote today, your ass is gonna get removed from Congress next week and we're gonna run a special election in your district because fuck you. <laughs> That's the type of organization we need to be on and we can be there. So, like I said, thank you guys so much for being here and yeah. <laughs> Uh, then he talked about something important that this is a coalition we want like organizations like theirs Freedom Fighters DC that is out on the streets that's doing mutual aid taking care of their neighbors um, as well as speaking truth to power uh, in the ways that she is so um, please if you're interested in your organization or you want to be part of an organization reach out Again, uh, my name's Olivia, but we're going to have some time and space at McPherson Park to have a little bit of a brainstorm to how we build this collective power together. Um, and now Patricia is going to go and do some music. Joy in the revolution. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Patricio Zamorano, long name. Uh, I'm very happy that we are inviting the Latino brothers and sisters to be part of, of this common effort. I'm the director of the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, COHA, C -O -H -A .org. I invite you to write with us, to read us. And we are here also to support this, this effort from Coping and so many coalitions because, well, I have here, uh, everybody knows this, this person, right? This is Salvador Allende, who actually died yesterday, uh, 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 40, 40 or 50 years ago, I don't remember now, 1973, September 11, 1973. That's, that's the first September 11 that this planet had to suffer. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy coincidence. It's the same September 11 that made this country suffer. Well, Chile suffered before that because of these guys, because of the Pentagon. The Pentagon spent a lot of money in trying to overthrow Salvador Allende's government. 3,000, more than 3,000 people, Chilean people, were killed directly by the military dictatorship that, uh, that was financed by the Pentagon. More than 100,000 people were tortured. More than 800,000 people were exiled. Those are real victims. We're talking about real, real cause uh, of, uh, of humanitarian issues because of the Pentagon. The Pentagon also is responsible through the Southern Command uh, of the suffering of so many people, threats to Nicaragua, to Venezuela, to Cuba. Those are governments who uh, enjoy the support of their people. It doesn't matter what the mainstream media says here, they are there because their people want them to be there, period. So do not believe the lies. Do not believe the lies against the Nicaraguan government. The Nicaraguan people support the Nicaraguan government. Nicaragua has the lowest crime rate in, in, in Central America, the best social uh, indexes, poverty, uh, quality of life. Nicaragua is a poor country but, but full of dignity. That's why the government is still there, not because of other reasons, not because of the lies that the mainstream media is trying to portray. Do not believe the lies. So uh, the same situation with, with Venezuela, with uh, 
Cuba, Cuba has been fighting the Pentagon and the and, and the U.S. government for 60 years, and they're still there, and they're going to be there for a long time because they they are supported by the Latin American people. So uh, I'm all, I'm also a singer-songwriter, so they asked me to sing something. So I'm going to sing a little song I compose specifically for all the victims of September 11, the Chilean September 11, also the U.S. September 11. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sing this. Thank you, man. <laughs> Capital 5 p.m. Uh, against intervention in Nicaragua. 5 p.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you so much, guys. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation. Money for jobs and education. Not for war and occupation.
So All pull right. them, but then I'm gonna try hustle with my friends. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up. Got money for war, but can't feed the poor. We're fired up. 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 We are going to introduce our next speaker, but one thing I want to say is that CutThePentagon.org, um, if you go to it, we have an action calendar there. So all of our coalition members, actions that they're already doing, we're wanting to uplift and amplify. Um, like we know organizers, activists are doing the work, so um, the action that was just said uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m. outside of the Capitol, also tomorrow at 6.30 outside of Kavanaugh's house um, to demand abortion and reproductive rights for all um, will be up there as well. So as we continue to expand our coalition, we will put that on the calendar event. So please sign up, take the pledge, cutthepentagon.org. Now I'm uh, so happy to introduce to you all Echo of Korean uh, for Peace Network in Grassroots DC. <laughs> Thank you, Coach Fitzpink, for having me. Um, <clears throat> thank you for this space, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to take part in cutting the Pentagon today. Um, so my name is Echo. I uh, live in Fairfax, Virginia. I've lived in this area for over 30 years. So the global um, the rally that took place 20 years ago, I was here, the anti-war movement, I was here. I'm glad that I'm near DC, that I was able to participate so that we are calling for peace and not war and occupation. Um, I am a coordinator for Korea Peace Now grassroots network. So many people still don't know that Korean War is actually the longest war the U.S. has been in. Uh -huh. We've been in the war for 71 years, since 1950, even before my mom was born, way before I was born. Now, if we ended the Korean War, how much money would we save? A lot of money, right? A lot of Pentagon budget will be cut. Most of the South Korean people don't feel the threat of war. They don't, they don't feel that there's going to be a war breaking out anytime soon. Now, North Koreans, they do feel threat of war because they are in a war with the U.S. Unless U.S. signs the end of the war uh, treaty and peace treaty, North Korea and the U.S. are still technically in the war. South Korea was not at the armistice table uh, to sign the armistice, so they have no say, unfortunately. So U.S. needs to end the war with Korea. Um, when Medea was inviting me to this event, she asked me I could speak about if the panic, if we didn't have the Pentagon budget, what would be useful for? I have two children. My older one, when I, when she was a baby, I had to pay at least twelve to sixteen hundred dollars. A month for daycare. I couldn't afford to have a second child because I'm paying almost all my salary paying for the daycare. In South Korea you might be paying maybe $300 per month and this is a country with way lower GDP than the United States. Um, so that, that is one thing that I would like to see that we get um, health care, we get the, the child care more affordable so that people can freely um, have babies and be able to raise their kids. Um, I do have a chant that I would like, like to participate for you to join. Um, and uh, if you want to visit my organization, it's koreapeacenow.org. So please visit our organization. My email is up there if you want to get connected and um, come and join the Korea Peace Now um, action. So. Um, when I say Korea peace when, you say Korea peace now, okay? Korea peace when? Korea peace now! Korea peace when? Korea peace now! Korea peace when? Korea peace now! Thank you. Yay! Let me say cut the Pentagon! 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 Cut the Pentagon!
Pentagon. Cut the Pentagon. Cut the Pentagon. Cut the Pentagon. Cut the Pentagon. Let me just say US out of everywhere. 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 That's right, my friends. As we bring our program to a close, I just want us all to remember that this is not uh, the end of something. This is just a moment to reflect and understand that in the same way that the U.S. war machine marches forward, so must we. Because it is only through the pressure from the organized masses that we'll be able to cut the Pentagon and to stop the ravages of the military industrial complex all over this earth. We see it even now. We see it in this hemisphere. We see it in Africa. We see it in Guinea, Ethiopia, Asia, the Middle East. There is not a square inch of this earth that has not felt the wrath of Washington in some form of fashion. And for many of them, their only crime was refusing to kowtow to the White House, refusing to bow to the whims of the millionaires in Congress. And so make no mistake, this struggle against war is a struggle for humanity. Right. So how y'all feeling? Y'all ready to march? Y'all ready to get some ice cream? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I believe my co-host Olivia is going to give some logistics. And he's going to break that down for us. Yeah, so we, we keep enticing you with food. Um, food and fun, that's what we want this to be about. It's hard work, but it's fun work as well. And someone who has inspired that is one of the co-founders of Code Pink. Uh, we, while we are doing a lot of things in D.C., actions every day, we also are going to be doing them all across the country, and she's going to talk a little bit about that. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, everyone, for being here. This is an awesome kickoff, but it's a kickoff. It's about actions every day. So you can check the website, Cut the Pentagon, to find out what you can engage in in a day. And like John said, the U.S. out of everything, that includes women's vaginas. And so tomorrow, we're at Kavanaugh's house. Yeah. So if you need details, they're always at Cut the Pentagon. And you hashtag Cut the Pentagon on everything. Because everything we need needs us to cut the Pentagon. So let's get that hashtag trending every day. We need members of Congress to stand up and be bold and say, I will no longer vote for war. We're not asking them to vote a little bit and vote for this little thing. No. It's no. No more war. We have to cut the Pentagon. And it's not, let's not listen to words anymore. Let's watch actions. Let's hold people accountable. Enough of the bullshit. It is really time. And we all know the cost. We've heard amazing speakers today. We know what the costs are. So now we're going to walk over to McPherson Square. We're going to do some more feeding. We're going to have some Ben & Jerry's ice cream. But I really want to bring up um, Ariel. Can you bring up our partners? Because this is a big tent. We are raising up all the people that are... Um, oops, sorry. Um, we are raising up all of our partners that um, have already joined and there's more than this, but this shows it's a big tent. It is about people, planet, peace, and the future. So it's, the, it's everything that we need. We need to cut the Pentagon. We need, it takes all of us. And we've got to make it so that the people are more powerful than the profit. So it means talking to your friends, getting people involved, involved and staying engaged. We're at the beginning of something. Let's build something big and beautiful. And now let's start.